Lesson 24, Fundamental Data Types. We have introduced four basic data types so far, char, int, double, and bool. If we include the void type, then we have five basic types. These types are representatives of the categories which we will call character, integer, floating point, boolean, and void. C++ has several variants of some of these categories built into the language. These definitions are somewhat compiler-specific, and I will be referring to the current Microsoft versions. In the character types, we have the char and wchar. Underneath, these types are simply integers. However, they are integers which specify alphanumeric and other characters in a table. A char can take on 256 different values and can be designated as signed or unsigned, but is signed by default. This means that the signed char can be any value from negative 128 to 127, and an unsigned char can be anything between 0 and 255. Wchar stands for wide character and can run from 0 to 65535. The values of the char type correspond to values in the ASCII table, and values in the range 0 to 127 are standardized to represent English characters and other control characters. ASCII stands for the American Standard Code for Information Exchange and was designed in the earlier years of computing. As computer usage had spread, there was a need for a larger table to represent non-English characters. This is the purpose of the WHAR. With integer types, things get a bit messy. There are three basic sizes of integer types, the short, the int, and the long long. The short can be any value from negative 32,768 to 32,767. The int can be roughly any value between negative and positive 2 billion. Finally, the long long range is just enormous. Each of these types can be designated as signed or unsigned. The signed versions may be designated with the signed keyword, but they are also the default when no qualifier is used. For unsigned, these types take on these ranges. Now, each of these six integer variants has several equivalent type designations. Although most of these will never be used here, they are important to know since you may come across them in legacy code. There are two main types to represent general floating point numbers, the float and the double. The float was the original floating point type and can represent values between plus or minus 3.4 times 10 to the 38, with seven digits of accuracy. The double, which has now become the standard, can represent values between plus or minus 1.7 times 10 to the 308 with 15 digits of accuracy. A double can also be specified as a long double, but a double and a long double are just the same thing. Fortunately, the other data types have only one variant and name, bool and void. We have discussed the bool type already. The void is not so much a type as the absence of a type. We have used void to designate that a function does not return a value, or that a function does not take any arguments. However, prior to C++, C also used void pointers to designate a pointer that pointed to an unknown type. While still available in C++, that usage is almost non-existent in actual practice. The full set of built-in types is shown here and is pretty large. However, we can narrow this list down to the most common representative of each type. We will seldom need anything more than the five types that we started with. However, unsigned types serve a very important specific purpose in high performance algorithms, and I tend to make heavy usage of unsigned ints in particular. This concludes the lesson.